Right. right. Today we can start with paper uh, 2023 and is a, a, a yes, chemistry paper one in organic and physical chemistry. Okay. So I'm going to go through the paper and I'm going to talk about the topics. Uh, before I start, I just like you to ask you to please, if you're watching my channel, please do subscribe to my channel. And um, if you like it, can you take the like button too, please? And please share with your friends if you, you think it's a good channel to watch. Thank you. Right, let's start with question number one. This question is about the elements period three. So give a full electron configuration of the element in period three with the highest first ionization energy. As the ionization energy increases across the period, so argon is going to be the most, uh, it's going to be the, hard, the highest first ionization energy. So you look at the argon and the periodic table, you got 2, 4, 8, 10, 12, 18 electrons. So you do 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p6. Okay? Given electron, uh, given equation including state symbols for the representative process that occurs when the second ionization energy of sodium is measured. So when you do the ionization energy equations, for people who don't know, if they say second, I think that's the sort of uh, trick I use. If they say second, you start with two plus here, okay, with a gas. Remember, you have to know the definition. And then you go to one plus there, plus electron in the end. So always remember, if it was like seven times this energy, you put seven here, and then you got six plus there. So that sort of will never get it wrong, that, that thing there. The table shows successful ionization energies for the element of period, period three. So you've got all this ionization energy here. What you're looking for is for the big jump in the ionization energy. So if you've got 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, and then you've got 27,000. So it's obvious the big jump is between six and seven. So that's where you change shell, okay? So if you change shell, is there are six electrons in the outer shell, so it has to be sulfur. Okay, large jump between the sixth and the seventh ionization energy. Okay, electron removed from the 2p orbital, which is closer to the nucleus. All right, so you need to mention those things to get the, the, the answer correctly done. Let's start question number two. So, this question is about elements of group two. Describe the structure bonding of magnesium. So, you got giant, so the structure of magnesium because it's a metallic bonding. Okay, it's a giant metallic bonding. So it's a giant lattice of Mg2 plus cations. So because it, magnesium is a 2 plus, you make sure you put 2 plus ions or cations. <laughs> then you put a definition of electrostatic attraction between cations and the localized electrons, So which is a metallic bonding. Okay? So question number 2.2, .2, state in trend the atomic radius of elements down the group. So if you go down the group, what happens to atomic radius from magnesium to barium? Give a reason for this trend. So the atomic radius will increase because as you go down, there will be more shells, okay? Uh, they don't care about anything else, but so it's, it's like this question is just two marks, so it's just two things. Because there are more shells, there's going to be more shielding from inside electrons, therefore there's be much less weak attraction between the outer shell electrons and the nucleus, okay? Given the equation could set symbols for the reaction of magnesium with steam, State two observations for this reaction. So the when magnesium reacts with steam, which is in gaseous form, mag, forms magnesium oxide solid there, plus H2 gas. So observation is here bright light and a white powder. Okay, you can use those two observations. You can also say bubbles, if ever sense. Right, let's have a look at 2.4 now. 2.4. It says the sulfates of elements group 2 for magnesium to barium have different solubilities. State the formula of the least solvent of these sulfates. So give a use of the sulfate. So, so uh, the least solvent is barium sulfate. As you go down the group, barium is, is, it becomes less soluble. And this is used as an x ray uh, of the bones and you know, the body. A sample of strontium is made up of three isotopes. So we're going to do uh, this one here, which is. A bit harder for you to understand. So it says this sample contains 83% by mass of strontium 88. The sample strontium has a, a relative atomic mass of 87.73. Calculate the percentage abundance of each of the isotopes. So you start with 88 is 83%. Okay. Then you go 100% minus 80, 83 gives you 17. So leftovers, so the other two are 17%. Okay. 
So strontium-86 and strontium-87 are both 17%. Now, if 87 strontium is X, so strontium-86 is going to be 17 minus X. Okay? So that's how you work out the first part so you know what's going on. Then you do this bit here. So you put a relative atomic mass. You go 88 times 83. Then you go 87X and then 86 times 17 minus X. Okay? So you divide everything by 100. So when you multiply 100 by here, you remove that 100 by multiplication here. So you end up with 8,773. Then you, are, you just solve all these questions. So multiply this by this. This stays the same. This times this minus 86x. Okay? So then you join up together everything. So if you've got 87x minus 86x is 1x. Okay? And then the rest will give you 7%. So if x is 7%, so 7% seven, so 7 is for 87 strontium, 86 is going to be 17 minus x, which is 10%. That's how you solve this question. I hope it makes sense to you. Thank you. Let's do the question 2.6, which is a quite a long question. It's got six marks. So you've got to read the information here. Take all in account. So it says magnesium hydroxide is used to use antacid to treat indigestion. A student does an experiment to determine the percentage by mass of magnesium hydroxide in an ingestion tablet. So you start with information. You've got 40 centimeters cubed of 0.2 mole decimeter cube HCl is in excess. It's added to 0.2 grams of powder tablet. The mixture is switched, it's so switched now, swirls thoroughly, and all the magnesium hydroxide reacts with HCl as shown below. So that's what reacts. The amount of HCl remaining after the reaction is determined by titration with 0.1 mole decimeter cube concentration of sodium hydroxide. 29.25 centimeters cube of 0.1 of sodium hydroxide is needed. So all the information is here. Calculate the percentage by mass of magnesium hydroxide in the digestion tablet. So you start by working out the amount of HCl added, which is 0.2, you took it from here, times 40 which is here, okay, divide by 1,000 to make in the M cube, gives you 0 0.08 moles. Then you want to work out the amount of sodium hydroxide, which is, you know that, okay, is here, which is 29.25 divided by 1,000 times 0 0.1 gives you that. So the amount of HCl, which is a ratio 1 to 1, will give you the same amount, okay? And then you have 0 0.08, so that's, that's the one that react with that. 0 0.08 minus 0 0.002925 gives you this amount of moles of uh, moles of HCl, okay. So, so that's that's the one who's uh, left over. So moles of magnesium hydroxide is going to be this value divided by two because the ratio is. So if you're doing the moles of HCl here, ratio is one to two. So you divide by two there, it gives you moles of magnesium hydroxide. So once you have that, you have you put a plug in the question in equation. Moles equals mass over molar mass. So you got the moles, you got the mass. You got, no, you haven't got the mass and you got the molar mass, okay? Because this is the magnesium hydroxide. There you are, molar mass calculation. You've got to show everything when you calculate some, show what you've done. Then you work out, it gives you the mass. The mass is 0 0.148 grams. Okay, so if you say percentage by mass, you take the amount of mass you calculate, divided by 0 0.2 grams times 100, which gives you 74%. And so the answer to this percentage by mass is 74%. I hope it made sense that all the steps I showed you here, okay? So you start by working out how much you started with, which is excess, and then you work out the sodium hydroxide and you know how much HCl it is, okay? And then whatever you take away, which because that's what reacted, the HCl you take away from what reacted, so you start with this and take away that, and then leaves you that. And that is what you uh, you react with your magnesium hydroxide. You divide by two because the ratio two to one, and then you carry on doing the rest like I explained before. Okay, thank you so much. I'm going to stop this now and I'm going to upload. Thank you.